Welcome to Real Talk, No Filtre. This is your host, Chainsaw Phoenix. I have with me Anna, and we'll be talking about fatillary, fatillary. <laughs> Even I cannot even pronounce the word, I'm so sorry, folks. Um, Anna, please say it for me. Fertility challenges. There you go. Yes. So this is, um, it's going to be quite interesting, this topic. Um, a lot of people are struggling with it. She probably has some stats on it. I personally do not know about this topic, but <laughs> my lovely guest, Anna, will take care of that for me. Thank you. So, Anna, please go ahead. Yeah, so um, one in six of your friends and family has experienced some form of infertility, and that's a Canadian stat, and one in eight in the U.S., and that's an April 2020 stat. So it's fairly common if you, you know, look at your how big your friends and family, you know, that group is. Yeah, it's, you know, fairly common and unfortunately it's not something that is openly discussed. So there is something called the silent sorority where women who are experiencing or have experienced fertility challenges fall into this group where it's very lonely, yet it's so common but not openly discussed. So that's where, um, you know, when you approached me for you know, coming onto your podcast mm -hmm. to kind of share my experience, it, it spoke volumes to me because um, it's it's creating a space for women to either listen to, to challenges and, and what that path looks like, and uh, also um, for women to connect with someone who, I guess, is in the trenches and quote unquote kind mm -hmm. of gets it. Yeah, it makes sense. So. With that being said, though, um, Again, I, I don't have experience on this, and I really do find that this topic will resonate with a lot of the viewers out there. There's over, again, 7 billion people out there, and you're saying it's one in six uh, women in Canadian and one in eight in the US. Mm -hmm. This really touches home base to a lot of people. Um, so what would your advice be for some of these people that are going through this these challenges? So I didn't even know, and I didn't expect to have any challenges, to be honest. Um, fairly healthy lifestyle. Um, you know, and, uh, being with my husband for a fairly long time, we, uh, we started trying and after six months it was advised, okay, if you haven't, you know, you've been intentionally trying to, you know, start your family and that hasn't happened to get help. And that get help means to basically get in contact with your family doctor, explain, you know, that you've obviously been trying, nothing's happened yet. And then um, start a plan for either, you know, investigating any fertility cha challenges or being referred to a fertility clinic. So that's what happened to me. I got referred to a clinic and then things got very sciencey, like, and almost military, like mm. where you are getting blood taken from you, like, <laughs> like a ton of blood work done to investigate if there's any kind of weird chromosome or deficiencies. Um, for both you and and your partner, and then you know he he's getting investigated as well with if if there's any physical or any challenges with his um, uh, I guess family making abilities, <laughs> and um, and then you you patiently wait to hear the results of yes there is an issue and here's how to resolve it or no there isn't so we were get, being told um, we we were coined as unexplained infertility because all our test results showed normal there's no issues. And that's even more frustrating because it doesn't answer the question, why? Like, why not me? Why not now? Why is it not happening? You know, you everybody knows the 18-year-old cousin who gets knocked up or the, you know, and, and, and then, or the, you know, the couple who gets pregnant on their honeymoon and they're devastated and you're you're trying intentionally to start your family and it's not happening and you don't know why and your tests are showing there you don't have a problem. So... Um, after months of being monitored from your, your cycle, um, a lot of blood work, a lot of, you know, ultrasounds and tests, and it's very intense. Um, and uh, again, not being able to talk to anyone about it because you just think no one around you has the same challenges. Um, it's very lonely and it's so, it's, it's really challenging to kind of go through every second or third day to some sort of appointment and you have to hide it. Um, because yeah, you just don't want to talk Broadcast about it, it and yeah. yeah and you're trying to hide it especially like if you're at work and people mm -hmm. find out you know you're trying to get pregnant and you might not get the promotion or you might get fired or you know why are you missing all these appointments um kind of wondering what's going on with you you obviously want to be a bit discreet 
Um, so what happened with, with us, or rather with me, I then got referred into uh, something called IUI. So you, you basically try, they try to impregnate you at the fertility clinic with like a turkey baster, <laughs> not quite a turkey baster, the actual turkey baster. People are looking at it like, you gross, mm -hmm. a very skinny one. So you take the, um, sperm sample and they basically put it in this like machine. That's kind of like a roller coaster, super stimulated. And then they put it in this like turkey baster, skinny, skinny turkey baster <laughs> in you and they shoot it up there like as, as far as it can go to try and get past um, certain like parts Obstacles. of the body yeah, yeah. that could be blocking you from um, the sperm from getting through uh, as close as possible to the egg. So they time it to ovulation and then the sperm, you're on medications, you're taking injections in your abdomen for the entire week. You do three rounds of that. Um, and after you're allowed six, but after three, if it's unsuccessful, then it's deemed, okay, your next option is IVF. So IVF is, um, in vitro fertilization and that process is, is next level. Like in terms of, you know, you're spending right now $20,000 for the procedure. So it's $10,000 for. Uh, yeah, for the entire thing um, in terms of procedure, but then there's medication on top of that, which is an additional expense. Um, most drug plans don't cover it. Um, some do. Then there is genetic testing, and some people don't want to do the genetic testing. So you genetically test the eggs that you um, do get fertilized from the IVF procedure to then determine if there's any abnormalities or any issues, because some people don't want to go through yet another miscarriage or whatever with um, an embryo that may not work. So you do the genetic testing up front and uh, determine, okay, if there is going to be a viable pregnancy, yes or no, and then proceed from there. It is very costly. I think uh, it was like almost a thousand dollars per per embryo. Oh, okay. Per yeah. and then there's a storage fee. There's uh -huh. there's financing available. There's fees and there's there's discount. Not so much discount. There's group rates. There's it gets very expensive and there's very no sciencey like, very quickly. There's no like buy one get one free. No, there is no <laughs> buy one get one free. There is storage fees. There is testing fees. There is additional um, genetic testing that you can do. Um, you know to, to, to determine like say if your family has. Down syndrome or um, all um, autism, you can pre-test for that. Like, mm. gets very um, almost designer baby. Um, so there is some ethics towards it where some people have some challenges with, um, or yeah, again the added expense of, you know, you think you you hear twenty thousand dollars and that's it, but then there's storage fees and testing fees and this fee and another fee and a and then the you know the alternative medicine if you like that realm of you know acupunct fertility acupuncture and naturopath and supplements like there's another expense there so you when you kind of get down this path and you don't know what you're what's coming at you how much is going to cost the timelines or anything and they're everyone and by everyone i mean is you know your medical practitioners are telling you everything looks great it's going to work and when it doesn't work and you spent all this money and you spent all this time and you're still left with, you don't know why, because they keep telling you everything is normal and everything is going to work. It's very heartbreaking. It must be really an emotional toll. It's and like you said, emotional roller coaster in a sense. It is emotional roller coaster because you, you know, you do the, the hormone treatment, you do one of the, you know, IUI or IVF, then you wait and then you get things tested and then you wait and then you hear results and then it could be okay, we're going through with, yes, we can impregnate you or no, we have to try again. And then you start this whole thing all over again. So there is a quote that I remember um, reading in my journey. Um, I, I lean towards Instagram for some of my um, infertility information and support was uh, infertility is like dealing with the five stages of grief every single month. You deny, you get angry, you bargain, you cry and you accept and you repeat every month and you keep going and you keep trying and you hope that you hear good results or you hope that you'll get results but it's just every month is a new cycle and every month that you don't try you wonder what if well was that the month we could have gotten pregnant was that the month that you know we we missed you know by saying oh we'll take a break well did we miss an opportunity like mm -hmm. it 
It yeah, it is. Very emotional. I guess yeah. the biggest thing is support is huge in, in, in this because especially um, going through all the testing, the needles, the financial costs and so on and so forth, that is very hard on, I guess, on the couple. So to have support on both ends, it, it um, it's, you need to have that support because if not, it really is a, a one road, especially if in, in a female's case. Um, and I'm going to touch on something that I might get backlash on, which is totally fine. This is why we call it <laughs> Real Talk No Filtre, mm-hmm. is the fact that women are viewed at as people that are supposed to have kids in a sense. And if they don't have kids, then something's wrong with them. And in your case, like you mentioned, you checked out, everything is fine. So with that mindset, and, and again, it is emotional and, and, and uh, talk, um, how did that make you feel in that sense? um it it definitely um yeah it definitely challenged my my sense of identity my my sense of worth um and uh, and yeah being what does it mean to be a woman when you can't create a baby so i mean in my instance i had three miscarriages so i knew i could conceive and but i couldn't maintain the pregnancy and i, I didn't know why and doctors didn't know why and, um, you know, it definitely, you know, hearing towards the end of like, well, we've tried everything and we don't know why, like lady, you're kind of, you're end of the line, you're out of luck. And, you know, what would my life look like if I couldn't be a mom, if we couldn't be parents? Um, it's not something that I've thought about and yeah. How do you navigate that space of, yeah, that almost feeling like you're not successful because you're you're not a mom. Um, but even though you could have this amazing career and lifestyle and whatever, but there's still that, you know, people look at you funny of like, oh, how come? Like, why not? You know, we, we were already starting to get some of those questions of, mm-hmm. oh, you guys don't want to? Because we noticed you guys like traveling, you mm-hmm. like, you know, you like your cars, you just like whatever. So, oh, it's like a lifestyle thing. You guys don't want kids. It's like, if only <laughs> if only you knew <laughs> right um it uh and it just makes you question everything like why you didn't why this month didn't co- turn out into a successful you know the start of a pregnancy was it the you know did i have too much feta cheese did i have too much <laughs> takeout did i not sleep well was it too much stress was it did we travel did I, was i dehydrated like did i exercise too much did i exercise too little did mm. i you know, should I stop eating red meat, go gluten-free, go, go dairy-free, try keto, try this. And you just repeat every yeah. month this list of what did I do? What did I not do? What could I have been doing? What should I have been doing? And I think that's why I think emotional support is huge. And you mentioned, uh, sorry, what was that uh, about the women? Uh, Instagram post? Or... Oh, yeah, the about, yeah, how you go through the five stages of grief. Like, no, no, prior month. to that, you mentioned something oh, about Oh, I, grief. how I went to, yeah, oh, the silent sorority. So yes. I ha- I searched hashtag silent sorority because I heard, I saw it in passing and through searching the, si- the hashtag silent sorority, I then found my way to a couple of fertility um, or infertility information um, pages, Instagram pages. And I really connected in with a few, one of them was finding fertility. Her name's Monica, the fertility coach, and she focuses on diet and food allergies and inflammation and, um, focusing on like holistically trying to recover your fertility challenges versus going down the path of, you know, medication and hormone treatments and, um, you know, round after round of IVF, if you will. Then there's another girl that I follow. Her name is, uh, Jennifer Robertson. Another great um, source that I like um, that I found a lot of information and there's uh, another one called Fertility Smarts, for t- um, Finding Fertility, FertilitySmarts.com. They have, that page has a highlight for men and going through fertility uh, challenges for, in support of the women. There's a lot of focus on the women because it's the women's body. She's doing a lot of the heavy lifting because she's going to all the appointments. But for the men, yes, there is men fertility challenges, um, but in terms of, you know, he, how to support the guy who's at home waiting for her to come back from yet another appointment, who's watching her cry Mm. again from yet another, you know, bad test or negative pregnancy test or miscarriage, whatever. How do you get that support for men? And it, that is huge when it comes to men's health because guys don't really talk about 
things openly like that and and then again there's a stigma of like well you're supposed to yeah, exactly. procreate right like yeah. why isn't why can't you get your woman pregnant mm-hmm. <laughs> right? yeah and i hopefully i again i this is this whole topic to me is new hopefully there is a support system for men out there if not maybe one day i'll create it maybe right. one day i'll create it and therefore because again the the fertility i think it's well i don't think i, I it's it's 50 50 and to, I know the science behind it is really focused on women. 